So today we were discussing customer discovery, uh, and that's specifically the art slash skill of talking to your customers and getting you getting them to tell you the truth. Most customers have sort of an innate ability to, to lie profoundly both to the entrepreneur and to themselves to um, try and please the entrepreneur by saying, oh, that sounds like a wonderful product. Um, customer discovery is the art of, of not pitching your product, but talking with the customer in a very natural sense about their pains, about their problems, how they're trying to go about solving these pains so that you can learn what sort of product to build rather than learn, will you buy this thing that I've already created. Uh, so it's about discovery rather than validation of a solution. Discovery of the pain and the person instead of the solution. So the role of market research is, it depends a bit what you mean by market research. So market research, I mean, if we just look at the words, researching the market can be anything. It can be doing customer interviews. It can be doing focus groups, like that's a typical form of market research and so on and so forth. Um, all of these different things are tools, you know, like a hammer or a screwdriver. And, and like any tool, it can be used for good or evil, right? You can, you can take a hammer and you can build a house with it or you can smash yourself in the hand. Um, more often than not, uh, customer interviews and market research for that matter are things that we entrepreneurs smash ourselves in the hand with. If we're building a new, completely new disruptive business market, there, there's no market research, right? Or, or we say like, we don't need to do market research because we're doing something so cool and amazing that's gonna disrupt every single market out there. Um, for those that are entering an existing market, it might give them a false sense of security in some ways. Oh, our market is growing. Okay, the market is growing, but are you resegmenting the market in such a way that it creates a new market? Um, do those numbers really mean anything? Okay, so market research is, is, is just a tool and it can be used in conjunction with something like customer interviews. But for the purpose of discovering customer pain, developing the empathy that you need in order to build a real product, you need to talk to that person. You can't develop empathy for a person from getting a market research statistic that says 67% of people own iPhones. That doesn't tell you about what sort of apps they want to build. 80% of people play games on their iPhone. That doesn't tell you what sort of game will be productive. 90% of people play uh, real-time based strategy games that are interactive. Like, it doesn't tell you what the new game should be. So this is uh, all quite interesting information, but not necessarily relevant to an entrepreneur developing a new product yet. Okay. All right, so the question is, how do I talk to customers about the things they don't know they want yet? And the answer is, uh, you can't directly. Okay. There, there's a very famous anecdote from uh, Henry Ford that says, well, if I'd asked the customers what they want, they would have said a faster horse. Okay. And there, there are two fascinating things about this anecdote, right? Like, first of all, uh, it's not true, he never said that, <laughs> um, which is just kind of cute. Um, but I mean, the point is the same. How can we talk to the customer about things that don't exist? Well, we can't, but we can say, well, why would you want a faster horse? Okay, what, what pain do you have? Like, what, what is the problem? Okay. For my solution to that problem, whatever it is, is gonna depend on your answer. If you want a faster horse to win horse races, me building you a car is not going to help you. If you want a faster horse to impress your girlfriend, you know, my building you a car, well, okay, that might help you, depending on the car, but um, you know, this is a very different solution. I want something that's slick and elegant. If you want a faster horse because it takes you three days to get to market to sell your crops, okay, you need a lorry. That's very, very different. So understanding the customer's pain, that's always something we can talk about. Even when it's a novel and innovative product, um, there's always sort of a basic need or a user behavior that they're, they're currently doing. Oh, I have to send SMSs to uh, like five different people in order to coordinate a meeting. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just publicly broadcast a short SMS to everybody so they'd know we're meeting at the movie theater? Oh, okay, so Twitter. Okay, I mean, Twitter actually was created originally and it was used in that fashion. It was a group SMS system. I mean, if you look at before Twitter, I mean postcards. It's, it's, the length of Twitter is, is very correlated to the amount of space that used to go on postcards. SMSs were developed with the exact same amount of space specifically for that reason, to exchange short messages in a way that was very um, uh, easy to use. So there is ultimately a user behavior, an existing user behavior or a solution that they're trying to hack around, that they're, they're trying to hack together that you can talk about.
And so that's what we're looking for. Isn't the real test of whether or not the customer wants the product, whether or not they will put their hand in their pocket and pay for it, rather than they express the pain? Uh, and, and the answer is yes. Um, just talking about the pain is only so much. You know, uh, we're human beings, we like to complain. Um, you know, I complain about my mom all the time, but I'm not gonna buy your mom execution service to get rid of her. Um, that, would be, that would be extremely cruel and unusual. Um, so there are things we'll, we might like to talk about uh, that, we, that we ultimately still have to validate. Okay, and that's, that's where the distinction between Steve Blank customer discovery, discovering more about the customer and customer validation, which is validating does your solution actually solve that problem and will they pay for it? Um, that is a distinct part of the process that must be accomplished. You can go very far just talking to somebody, but ultimately at the end of the day, you have to ask them to give you something. And even if it's a freemium product or a free product, okay, they're giving you something. They're giving you their attention. They're willing to put forth the effort to download and install it. So there is some sort of exchange of currency, whether that's time or data um, or money. And that's what you ultimately need to validate with in a quantitative sense, as opposed to qualitatively, which is what we're doing in customer, uh, customer discovery mode. We're generating new ideas. We're discovering uh, the pain points and, and ways that we might try and solve the solution. And then we're going to validate those quantitatively. The purpose of Lean Startup in general and doing customer discovery is to iterate quickly, to have many swings um, at bat or at cricket, uh, I guess, or whatever, whatever sport we feel like playing in Ireland. Um, many, many kicks on goal. So, so the object here is to have as many chances to learn what the right product is as possible. Uh, and we can learn very quickly by speaking to people. Um, just perhaps some, I would ask, uh, what additional resources might be available to learn more about this. And I would, I would highly recommend The Mom Test by Rob Fitzpatrick. It's a wonderful book about customer discovery. It's probably the best written one I've, I've read. There's a new book coming out uh, by Cindy Alvarez called uh, Lean Customer Development. Uh, that's a little bit more geared towards enterprises. So if you're a larger company and you want to learn about this concept, there's that. And then, of course, there's a, a classic book called I believe the Tech Entrepreneur's Guide to Customer Development by Patrick Vlaskovitz and Brent Cooper. Um, and that's a wonderful book that kind of takes Steve Blank's original concept of customer development, customer discovery, customer validation, uh, and, and writes it in a way that's a little bit more intelligible. Uh, and then the last book, if you're really serious and you really want to kind of dig into this concept, is Steve Blank wrote a new book called The Startup Owner's Manual. And it is a, a massive tome, uh, but a wonderful reference book. So if you have specific questions or if you're trying to figure out on B2B, how do I do an, a minimum viable product in a sense, it's a great book to pop open and look through the index and find the chapter that's relevant to you. Mm -hmm.